All right, in this video, we're going to clean out this generator a little bit. I started it up already, get ready to change the oil because it's over on the hours. It's due for its oil change. And uh, I'm getting ready to go on vacation soon. So when you're getting this thing woken up from sleeping all winter, this generator is just like your lawnmower engine in regards to the squirrels and the mice. They love these things. They think it's a house and they, they move in, you know, they make a nest in there just like your lawnmower underneath the cover where the pull start is or where the cooling fan is on your riding mower on the very top of the engine. You know, you start it up the first time after winter and you see little pieces of, you know, twigs, you know, brush or little pieces of paper come out and then it stops. You think, oh, okay, it's all right. It's good to go. Well, it's bad enough when that happens on a lawnmower engine, because if everything doesn't come out, usually it doesn't, it's going to overheat and you're going to destroy the engine. Well, I don't want to destroy the engine on this generator in my motorhome here, uh, just like you don't want to destroy yours. So I don't know how this comes out, but I know it's a project to get it out. There's all kind of wires and you got to put a lift under it to, to drop it down. I'm going to try not to do that. So I got an air hose and a long wand and I'm going to blow in the back there in the top of the engine and around the sides. I already saw some acorns laying in here. Down in here there's a bunch of acorns in here. There's a couple there. I didn't see anything back there but when I started it up there was little pieces of white dust that was blowing out out of here. So I know there's stuff in there. I saw a couple pieces laying here before I started it. So I'm going to try and blow this out. And hopefully when I start it again, nothing else comes out. There's even a little bit of paper that's laying down here. It looks like sawdust coming out. And hopefully it comes out good. Now I had this running, but I'm going to prime it a little bit. Continue this video when I come back to change the oil. Okay, we're back here on this oil change for my RV generator. I already ran it, it's nice and warmed up. Got my new oil filter here from Amazon, I believe it was. Now, normally I don't do this, but I'm going to put a hole in the bottom of the filter so the filter drains because right around here there's a, a rubber grommet. To keep the weather out of the inside of this compartment i could just take the filter off but then the oil is going to get all around here and i I'd, I'd like to try and avoid that this here is where you drain the the oil out of the engine pretty nice that they put this on here with a little valve and there's a hose that goes down through the bottom of the housing here Well, not really sure what's going on there. The oil is full. Maybe something moved into this tube over the winter and has it clogged up. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there was something in there. Mud daubers or a bee made a home in there or something like that. So now we got the oil flowing. So once that engine oil is draining out of the done draining out of the engine take my handy dandy pliers here this is a very small filter I have other oil filter tools and these are the only ones that actually got small enough now the ones I'm talking about that I have are probably not ones that the average homeowner is going to have they're, they're, I'm not talking about the ring kind that goes around here now, I don't have any of the cup kind if you decide to buy these online and uh, you see a package deal where you get this with the with the cup that fits on the end, it would be a good idea to get that unless you know you have something 
like this that's going to actually fit this filter. But I was pretty sure that I had something that would work, so I didn't bother getting that cup. But if you don't have, if you're, this is the first time you're doing your oil change and you, you order filters, it'd be a good idea to just go ahead and get that extra tool. Unless you know you have something. I did. There we go. Now it's draining faster. I do have another kind of wrench that's, that's a, a claw that when you turn it, it gets smaller and closes. But it didn't get this small. This is a, a very small spin-on filter. Like I said before, unless you already have something that you know is going to work, it's a good idea to just get that cup that fits on here. Because even with those pliers I had, you have to be right up against the bottom of this housing in order to, to, for these pliers to grip. Now, it'll work. You know, I'm going to get this done. I've been changing oil for a long, long time. So I knew I'd be able to get it one way or another. But to, to avoid hassle, a, a cup that goes on there and you put an extension on it, have your ratchet down here, you crack it right loose. That's really the way to go. And it came off nice. Now, different manufacturers, so the holes look different on the inside. But the outside diameter is the same. The length is pretty much the same. 122.0836 and uh, FJ0836. And there, it shows a part number right there. The same part number. So... You know, I was pretty sure it was going to be the right filter because I did some research. I didn't just pick the first one. I want to make sure you have something on there. Usually there's going to be oil on the underside. So, you know, that was always a thing. Oh, I'll put oil in the ring on, on, this, on the gasket there. And I guess you need to do that if you reach up in there and clean the oil off the, off the housing inside. Now to get this in there without getting it dirty. You need to work it a little bit to get it through that grommet. Now when I picked out this filter, I was shopping online. And there was different sellers selling the, the same numbered filter. But uh, the, the reason you look at reviews, there was a couple of them where the people said that it leaked or that it, it didn't screw on easy like it's supposed to. So, make sure you do a, at least a little bit of homework. Or you could just go right to Cummins and get theirs. It's only like $30 a filter. You know, if that works for you. Now, this generator is supposed to have a two-quart capacity. It doesn't look like there's two quarts in my pan down there. Some of that's going to depend on how level the, the RV is sitting when you drain it. I got it as level as I can. I know it's not perfectly level, but I really want to get the oil changed. And of course, when it is sitting level, when I'm out on the road, I'm going to check the, check the level again, make sure that it's not low. And this oil that I'm putting in, I got it from Tractor Supply. I read a, did a, a decent amount of research as to what oil to put in, what weight, and uh, apparently, you know, there's a recommendation of 1540, depending on what temperature range you're running in. And there's also a lot that recommended SAE 30, straight 30. No multi-weight. And supposedly that's what Cummins recommends to uh, control oil consumption the way it was worded. Like they expect it to burn a little bit of oil just for lubrication, to lubricate the uh, the cylinder walls and the pistons or the, the rings. You uh, do your own research as to what oil, to, what, what brand or type of oil and what weight. 
I'm not going to try to convince anybody to use a certain kind or a certain weight or a certain brand. This is just about how to do it. This is just for the procedure. And a little bit of technique, maybe. So far, this has been fairly easy. I, I think, think the biggest problem anybody would have would be getting that filter off. If you don't have something that's going to grip a filter that small. It is a very small filter. I'm going to put this in and, and check it. And this oil that I have here, it's straight 30 weight. So I'm going to keep it in the motorhome just so I have it for the generator. Or when we're out somewhere, you know, maybe somebody else will need a couple drops of oil. I can give them some for their generator. Something like this, you, you don't want to run this low. The oil's not that expensive. It's a lot cheaper to keep the oil level full than it is to replace a whole generator. A little maintenance is going to go a long way here. Well, let me start this up now. And then we'll pull the dipstick out again. Probably don't need to prime it, but uh, I'm going to hit the button anyway. Okay, so it did need to get primed. When I started it earlier, which was the first time in a couple weeks, I primed it longer and I hit the button, it started right up. It didn't crank over and over like that. So even though the engine's still warm, for whatever reason, it would have liked to be primed a little bit longer. All right, this is just over half. I'm gonna stop there and uh, Check it again when it's on the level, maybe at a gas station. I'll check it. But that's going to be a wrap for this. So if you think this might help you out, you know, please like and subscribe.